right, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be on our pet memories. So I thought it'd be really nice to show you guys some of my pet memories of my past pets that have, you know, passed away and show you some photographs and talk about them for a little bit. I did do this video oh, quite a while ago, but the quality was so bad, I decided to redo it. And I just think it's a really nice thing as a pet owner to remember your past pets, remember the way they were, you know, share photos and memories and enjoy their lives basically and you know never forget them so if you by the end of this video if you enjoyed it then it'd be really nice to see your pet memories too so it'd be really great if a few of you made some videos similar to this showing some photos maybe some videos of your past pets and talking a bit about them and you can always put it as a video response to this video and to do that you just have to click on the comments box and it'll either say post if so if you've written a comment you can press post or you can press create a video response and then it'll take you to all your videos and you can make it as a response so that'd be really nice if we kind of shared a nice collection of all our pet memories so i'm going to actually start with the pets that i've i lost a few years back but basically grew up with and still to this day i miss him like crazy he really meant the world to me and i was going through quite a tough time w during the time that i had him and he really really helped me pull through that time and just he just gave me a lot of happiness and I just really really miss him so this is my rabbit cookie and I had him a few years back quite a long time ago now and he was about seven to eight years old when he passed away he passed away from a tumour unfortunately it's a real shame because realistically if he hadn't had the tumour I could still imagine him being part of my life now but he was pretty much the closest thing I would personally had or owned to a dog he was so friendly and even though I'd had rabbits previously he was the first rabbit that I'd began to realize how interactive and how understanding they really were so luckily I do have quite a lot of photos of Cookie and a lot of memories I have one or two video clips but that's pretty much it but compared to my older pets who I've got maybe one or two photos of which is quite sad really you know I've got quite a few cookie quite luckily really so that's really taught me a lesson to keep taking photos with your pets because you never know what's going to happen and you really appreciate the memories when you've got them so seeing as I've got a few photos even though they're not the best I thought I'd show you his hutches because even back then we did build our own rabbit hutches or pet housing because we did never believe that the ones you could buy from shops were ever big enough so we always built our own even back then so I thought I'd go ahead and show you what Cookie lived in so Cookie got to be quite a big rabbit actually and he outgrew two hutches so he had three hutches but he outgrew the first two so this was the first one he had as a little baby you can see him in the top here and we just built a double tier hutch and as you can see here it's even it is quite a big hutch it must have been about six foot by two foot my guess is it wouldn't have been anywhere less than that but it this is guess your standard kind of hutch and it's just a standard kind of look of a hutch really so that was where he first lived so his second hutch was a one level hutch with a run attached his hutch i think was three foot by four foot and his room was about three foot no his room was slightly bigger it was four foot by four foot if I can remember rightly so his he his hutches always stayed in the garage but we always pulled them out onto the driveway in the day when it was a nice day so he had got the sunlight and things and then he just pretty much had a run of the garden whenever he felt like it so he had quite a good life which I'm really pleased of because it's always nice to remember your pets and know they had a good life. So these aren't the greatest of pictures but you get the idea. So here's his hutch and it came out here and this was the length of it if that makes sense. So this is the first hutch that we had ever seen because we built it obviously that had a cat flap attached to it. So our idea was we had a cat flap which you see here and that was the entrance to the run so here's the cat flap here and then he also had a cat flap here which meant we could if he we rolled because it had wheels the cage so he could roll it out into the garden and then also leave that open so he could hop in and out of his hutch and run whenever he felt like it so he had the 
cat flap here and cat flap there and that was all our original idea because at the time there was no such thing as rabbit hutches with cat flaps or anything like that or not that we knew of anyway of rabbit sheds or anything like that we've always said that if we had have thought of it back then we would have had a shed for him or used the shed for him but you know that was the best at the time and we thought it was a really interesting idea to use cat flaps and he was really good with them so that's what it looked like as you can see here he's got a hay rack there and a few toys it's not the clearest of pictures because he got in the way apparently but it was a really nice hutch but his third hutch which I'll show you in a second is definitely my favourite so there you can see it a bit clearer he still was only a baby then he just outgrown his first hutch this little corner thing here was where the toilet sat he was fully toilet trained and back then that was also an achievement because we, you didn't really hear of rabbits being toilet trained then there's cat flap here and then here's his run and I think that's my little cousin feeding him some lettuce and then finally this was his third hutch and this was definitely my favorite hutch i really don't remember the measurements of this but it was so big i remember being able to lie in the bottom of it and in the top of it and it was just such a great size he was a really big rabbit we wonder even to this day we didn't know fully but we always wondered if he had giant rabbit genes in him somewhere because he was such a giant rabbit but this was his third and last hitch before he passed away and it was a really great hitch as you can see down here I hate the double tier hitches that you see and the ramp takes up all the space and if you can see the ramp there it literally takes up no space at all in the bottom level the bottom level is completely clear of space I just hate seeing the ramps that are so big and this the cages are so small that the ramps just take up so much space which this is the reason why basically we ended up building our own hutches and then here's Cookie on the top tier and he's got a little toy there and his bedroom area was completely insulated kind of like we did with the guinea pig hutches and then here he is flopped out on the top level I wish I'd got a measurement of Cookie himself because he was just so massive I've not really seen a rabbit to compare him with unless I look at kind of giant rabbits which proves maybe he had some giant rabbit genes in him somewhere but he was such a loving and caring rabbit so this is my guinea pig stitch and he was actually my first ever guinea pig. He was a male guinea pig and he didn't have a companion because we couldn't get him to get along with anyone. And he was, like I said, my first ever guinea pig. He was what got me into guinea pigs. I just absolutely loved him. I'd never owned one before and he was a complete surprise to me. I didn't expect the way guinea pigs to be at the time. And since him it's taught me so much about guinea pigs like i said he was my first ever one and i just learned so much from him and he gave me really great experiences he's also a pet i really do miss and he's had such a loving nature he was really really cute and really tame too which was great and it's always made me want because he was a blonde head guinea pig with a white ring he i've always wanted a blonde guinea pig again but Every time I see one it kind of makes me a bit upset because it reminds me of Stitch so much. Okay so this is an interesting one because I don't think any of you know that I owned a tortoise before. So this was Emma, she was my tortoise that I owned a few years ago and well quite a few a long time ago. I actually named her after the Spice Girls so that's why she got the name Emma and I absolutely loved owning a tortoise back then so it is really nice to have to be able to own one again even though I kind of found Ellie and not not so nice situation a, a good situation come out of Ellie I guess because she's got a nice home now and we spoil her rotten so but um Emma was such a nice tortoise I absolutely loved owning her she just got a bit much I got we had her a few years and then she got a bit much for me because I was quite young so she just got a bit too much well, at that age for me so my brother kind of took her on then and then when eventually she went to live with my brother when he moved out and we don't know what happened from then on to be honest she passed away and we kind of got different stories we're hoping she did pass away naturally but she was quite young and she was the youngest of the litter would you call it litter of tortoises i don't know but she was the youngest one and being me when I was at that age I picked her because she was small and cute so she took a lot more care so she was a poorly tortoise unfortunately so, 
yeah, I'm sure you guys didn't know I owned a tortoise before, but I had quite a lot of experience out of Emma, and she gave me quite a lot of experience because now I know, well, I learned a lot ready for Ellie, even though I didn't expect to get Ellie. It was really nice, it's really nice to have a tortoise again, and they're really nice pets to keep and really rewarding too. So this is another one of my past rabbits and I do have a couple of other pictures of past rabbits but they're not so great quality so this is the only one I can really show and unfortunately of my first ever ever rabbit, um, I think they were called Peter and Benjamin, they ended up being male and female and had loads of babies so that was their story but we never got any picture of them unfortunately. But this was Patch, he was the rabbit I had before Cookie and the story behind Patch, he was only with us for six months unfortunately. We bought him from a local pet shop, he had a hole in his ear which was unusual, we didn't really know much about it but they insisted he was only six months old so he was such a energetic and loving rabbit I couldn't help but pick him. So we brought him home and everything was fine and he was having a great life with us and my, when my granddad came across him he realised straight away that he was a ex-show rabbit so my granddad's kind of he's into his pigeons and birds and things and he used to be a judge in the shows for pigeons and things so he spotted straight away that he was an ex-show rabbit and this hole in his ear was where his tag would have been so he was actually a, quite a few years old and the, this pet shop had pretty much conned us and sold him to us and although that was quite a naughty thing to do and it wasn't very nice you know we got quite an old rabbit you know I think things happen for a reason and we got him and he'd stayed with us in the last six months of life we had a big hutch built for him and he had a happy good spoiled end to his life which I'm happy about because although he was only with us for six months and it was really sad what they did to us he could have been in that pet shop for six months and not been given a home so at least we had him for six months and he was a really nice rabbit and he was the rabbit I had before Cookie I think I got Cookie a year or, or more than a year after he'd passed away but even though it was quite sad how he came to us I think it all happened for the best so this is my brother's dog Willow and she also has a story which I'll tell you about in a second but she was my brother's dog and he pretty much had her as soon as he moved out and because I was at my brother's house so often she basically became one of the nearest things I had to a dog so I know I said Cookie was like a close thing pet you know in terms of the nature of dogs and how they are but she was the actual dog that I was close enough to having as my own dog so I used to walk her you know every single day and I did a lot for her and she was with my brother for 10 years and had to be put down when I first started YouTube actually. So there's a, actually a memory video of her on my channel so I'll link that down below. And it was one of the first videos I posted actually. So it was really sad and I was really upset when she had to be put down. She was really sick though and it was such a horrible day saying goodbye to her and things. But his story was um, my, I can't remember how, where my, what my brother was doing but somehow he was on the beach, maybe we could go for a walk or something, but Willow ran up to him and, or she ran up to him and she, he found her or something like that, but she was battered and she was black and blue with bruises, she was covered in cuts and she was, you know, incredibly skinny, like unhealthy skinny, she just didn't, he describes it as like she didn't look like a dog, so he picked her up, took her to the vet straight away and tried to figure out how to help her and if she had an owner and it turned out she had been beaten by whoever whoever had been keeping her so basically end of the story was my brother ended up having her and looked after her and kept her for 10 years and I can't believe it's been that long but yeah so I was really young at the time when he found her and it was really horrible but she had a really good life and you know all's well that ends well and like I said things happen for a reason and she was a really loving caring dog and I'll definitely post the link in the description bar of the video I made about her and you can also if you click the screen now I'll, it'll take you to that video too it'd be really nice to if you're interested in having a look at that because she was a really nice caring dog and even now if I go to my brother's house I really do miss her, it's not the same there, it's so quiet without it but she was a really nice dog. 
So I'll end the video with my hamsters. So I've had quite a few, but I've only got pictures of one of my hamsters. I think I've got pictures of another hamster somewhere, but I'm not sure where they are. But I also actually had a hamster. Some of you, well, I don't think anybody knows this. I had a hamster before starting YouTube and he passed away just after starting YouTube. So I rescued him as a poorly hamster. So he was quite ill at the time and, you know, things were looking up and then he got worse and... He didn't last with me that long but he was a long haired Syrian named Tigger and to this day I'm really upset because I never got one photo of him. I just never got the chance or never thought to take a photo of him and now I've got no memories like that of him just of what I can remember. So he was a really nice hamster and it's a shame I didn't get pictures of him but at least his last few months were with me and he had a nice big um, bin cage actually so that was really nice but it's just like I keep saying make sure you take lots of pictures of your pets because you might regret it if you do so this hamster is actually my most memorable hamster his name was ginger biscuit he I had him when I was younger so he didn't have the biggest of cages but he was my most memorable hamster because he was so tame and I've never met hamsters as tame as that since and he lived up to the age of three and a half and ended up dying of cancer we believe so you know he lived to a good old age and he passed away with a kind of quite a common hamster illness I suppose but his old age probably didn't help that but he was three and a half I think that's a really big achievement for a hamster and you know he was let out daily and had the run of the house he was a really tame and loving hamster and really really cute and he had a really nice ginger colour with white little stripes under his tummy and these aren't the clearest of pictures but luckily with this hamster what I did at that age was when he passed away I made a big scrapbook so this is the scrapbook but I'm not going to show it in this video <coughs> but um, I made a big scrapbook of everything that everything in his life really like there's chew toys in this book and everything that he had and I've written about his toys and drawn pictures and there's photographs all the way through so that's something really nice to do if you lose a pet and you're trying you're a bit upset you're trying to get over it maybe make a scrapbook with pictures and chew toys and little things that they liked and you know write down the habits and things because those are things that you sometimes forget so I'm really glad to do this because I look back at this all of the time and I've never forgotten the kind of little personality of this hamster so it's really nice and he was so cute it's a shame he didn't last more than three and a half years but I think he was a little bit too old but you know so those are all are all of my pet memories it's a shame I don't have more pictures because I did have you know hams a couple more hamsters and rabbits and other pets too mm. that I can't show because I just don't have the pictures or can't find them because there are some pictures that I couldn't find but I did also have a budgie that I'll show you quickly but I can't find any pictures without people in the only picture that I can find that's quite clear of him is this one and I can't show it properly because it's not me in the picture so here's the little budgie his name was Tweety there you go so I would show it if it was me when I was younger but the, unfortunately this isn't a picture of me it's a picture of a family member so I don't think it's very fair to just go ahead and show that without permission so here's the budgie anyway and his name was Tweety and he was a lemon yellow, yellow budgie so those are all my past pets that mostly are these are the ones that are most remember rememberable memorable but you know I just wish I had more pictures of them and especially the ones I don't have any pictures of but I hope you've enjoyed this and please 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 if you feel like making a video like this it would be really amazing to share all the memories and things of your past pets so click the comments box and make it as a video response and that would be really nice to see your past pets and everything and I hope you enjoyed seeing mine and learning about the pets that I've owned and things so and you know these are pretty much the pets that I've got my experiences from and learn everything from so anyway I hope you've enjoyed watching Thanks for watching as well and I'll speak to you all next time. Bye everyone.